How's it going guys? Donovan here. In today's video, I'm going to talk about why I've been gone for the past couple of months and what actually happened to the RT. So for those of you who missed the last video that was uploaded just over a hundred days ago actually, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a rundown on everything that happened. So on August 12th, I was driving back from a friend's uh, birthday dinner. I was driving home, believe it or not, a lot of people like to think that I was driving like a maniac. I was actually driving normally. I came down to a stop, um, the light turned green before I, before I completely stopped. And uh, when I went to give the car gas, uh, the car was revving up, but the car wasn't actually moving. When I stopped the car and tried to put it into park, I was throwing an error saying that, that the vehicle speed was too high. Um, now you guys know that's what happens when you try to put the car in park when it's actually rolling, but the car wasn't actually rolling. So I shut the car off and I realized that the car was still rolling when I had it in the park position and the car was off. So the parking spall wasn't engaging on the car. At this point, I was worried I broke something, but since I had been flashing different transmission tunes, I decided to try to flash one of my other ones on and see if that would fix the issue. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Um, so I had it towed home. Thankfully, I had AAA, and um, over the next couple of days, it was just internet searching, pulling codes and stuff. I'll put those codes on the screen now. Those codes basically indicated that there was a mis mismatch from uh, the input and output turbine of the transmission, which would lead you to believe that it was an internal transmission error. Failure, rather. You guys know I don't really like to have other people work on the car, but I went ahead and took it to the Ontario dealership uh, out near me um, in hopes that they'd have some uh, a way of at least better uh, diagnosing what the issue was and then my plan was that I would be like, oh, I'm not gonna pay that and then I'd take it and work on it myself. Um, obviously I can't do internal transmission work, you need a specialist for that, but assuming that it was something else, like a stupid sensor or something, I would take the car back, do the work myself. They had it for about a day. Um, they give me a call back and say, uh, your transmission is completely broken. Uh, we pulled the codes, which I had already done, and uh, it says that there's some internal damage. And I said, okay, did you guys pull the pan to see if there's any uh, shavings in it or any uh, metal pieces? And he said, uh, no, we didn't, we just uh, pulled the codes. They wanted $5,500 to replace this transmission, having not opened it, having not done any diagnostic steps before charging me $5,500 to replace the entire transmission. Um, in my opinion, that's pretty stupid and um, a money grab by the dealership because of course they didn't want to cover it under warranty because the transmission is tuned. Um, there's not actually any work done to it, so some people will say they should have covered it and others will say uh, they shouldn't have. It kind of depends on the dealer you go, with, go to, but uh, Ontario Dodge didn't want to work with me and uh, they saw a quick cash grab um, and you guys know I don't work like that. So, I had the car towed out of there, and I argued with them and told them, I'm not paying you guys the $200 diagnostic fee that you charged uh, to just pull the codes because I had already done that myself. You didn't give me any new information, and you didn't actually attempt to do any real diagnostics. If you guys were really trying to figure out the issue with the car, you would have pulled the pan. You guys are aware that I have a friend who works on Dodge Vipers. His name's Dan. I called up Dan and said, hey, Dan, who do you have work on your transmissions? He passed me to a man named Joe in Westminster, California. I took the car there, dropped the car off. I was okay with the car being down for a few weeks because I go to school out of state. I wasn't gonna be driving the car anyways. I said, get to the car when you have time. He puts the car up on the lift. He pulls the pan. There was no, nothing in the pan. I mean, there were a few shavings, but um, nothing like actually worth worrying over. Um, of course, there's gonna be a little bit of metal because of how I, drive the car like I raced the car um, but it wasn't anything that he hasn't seen before he's like we're gonna keep poking around a little bit because he didn't see anything wrong with the transmission you know at, at first glance he calls me back about an hour later he says Donovan uh, your back right axle was popping out a little bit we pushed it back in and the car goes into park just fine and and Joe goes bring me a new differential and bring me uh, a new pair of axles and uh, we're gonna put this thing together and I think that's the issue I went ahead, uh, through a friend, I purchased some Hellcat axles and I just brought him my stock open differential, which is actually on the floor over there right now and I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, we took the car, uh, I, my dad took those parts over to the shop, Joe put them in, the car drove out of the shop just fine, no issues, no more check engine lights, uh, no more codes being thrown. 
So those codes were actually being thrown by, the, by, by an axle that had slipped out. So for whatever reason, the sensors in the car were reading a mismatch between the transmission speed and the wheel speed. And just pushing them back in pretty much fixed the issue. Now the reason that the open diff is not in the car anymore is because I picked up my limited slip differential from Joe uh, last night, my friend Gabe, who is MoTeC and on Instagram, check out his Instagram page. We took it out, we took this open differential back out and put my limited slip back in and of, of course with the Hellcat axles and I drove the car home just fine. So there was nothing actually wrong with the car. The axles just slipped out, which I'm assuming uh, probably an error from when I installed the axle originally, but it's in there snug now. Um, the, the heat shields are in good shape, or, or the dust shields rather, and the car drives fine. So that's pretty much all that happened. Um, I got very fortunate that it wasn't a transmission issue. Um, like I told you guys, this car wasn't isn't really making the power that would break this transmission. These 8HP 70s are very reliable. Um, and this car hasn't gotten beaten any more than the other 5.7s and Rams that you see on YouTube that are boosted and, and have a huge torque converter. Like, this doesn't have all that, and I race it even less than they do. So, to the rest of you guys who um, were eagerly wait awaiting an update, uh, the car is fine now. I'm on break for the week, so I'm filming some videos that I can upload when I uh, go back to school. And, uh, yeah, with that being said, there's a bunch of stuff I did in the background while we were working on this car and while I haven't been uploading videos, there's a lot of big updates, new things that have happened since the car last broke. I'm excited to show you guys those things. I hope this answers any of your questions and I appreciate you guys for reaching out to help uh, a bunch of people. There was a guy named Mike on Instagram who knows all about these 8HP 70s. Uh, he was super helpful. Everyone else who reached out, um, I very much appreciate you guys. I very much appreciate your help. Uh, to those who thought it was the differential, in a way, you were correct. It was the axles and differential. That being said, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was just kind of a talking head video, but uh, I wanted to update you guys. You deserve to hear what actually happened. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.